Hello and welcome back to 929 Games. Today I want to show you how you can collect stuff like coins or something like this using Bolt and Unity. So at first we are here in a normal URP project. Let's add a new scene in our assets. So create a scene and let's call it coin just for coin collection. And if you don't know how to install Bolt and so on, there's a video about how to get started with. So here we are in our, our new scene, nothing special going on. So what we need is we need a sphere that is like our player, let's call it player. Okay, so here we have sphere. I want it to be at position 000, and I want to call it, let's, you know what, let's call it player because <clears throat> that's what the player will be at the end. Okay, and then we need one more object and that is the collectible. So for that, I want to use in this case, just a cube because it's like a little bit, you know, it's a little bit different just, okay. Let's use this one right here. Okay, we have both of them. So the sphere itself will have a rigid body. You see it right here. And we don't want to use gravity. I want to show you manually when we touch it, what will happen. Okay, it's a sphere collider and I want to do it at trigger event. So this will be a trigger event. So we want to have another sphere collider right here and this will be a trigger. Okay, so I want to make it a little bit bigger. So the radius will be at 0.6 and the same I want to do with this box. This will be just a trigger at all. We don't need this to be physical. We, we don't really touch it with anything. So it could just be the trigger. Okay. Okay, perfect. Now we have our both objects that we really need to get this logic running. But I also want to show up here, somewhere up here, how much like collectibles we already have. So let's add a new UI and then text. So this text will be coin amount, for example. Uh, the canvas should be at a scale with screen size, 4K resolution. Okay, perfect. And the screen amount right here. Okay, let's just double click on it to have it a little bit bigger. Just like this. You see the text is pretty small. Not very nice. Up here you can change it. You see you have the sand and so on and this rectangle tool. Just let's use this and you can see if you drag it up and make it bigger, it doesn't change anything. But if we now make best fit, it gets a little bit bigger. You see that? But the maximum size is at 40, but we want to have it at 500. You see that? Awesome. Bring it up to the side like this and let's set the text to zero. Okay, so far so good. We got set up our scene. Let's go back to our player, this one right here. And now we want to add a new flow graph. So let's search for flow machine, uh, flow machine, sorry. <laughs> and we want to make a new one in our scenes folder and let's call it collect. Okay, perfect. Let's edit the graph now. You see that we have a start and update function. We do not use any of it. We just want to use an on trigger enter. Here we go. Okay, so if the owner of this object itself, so the, you know, gets a trigger, then we can, what we will do there. So what will happen at the end? We want to at first destroy the one object because we don't need this coin anymore or this, in this case, cube. And on the other hand, we want to add one to a variable or maybe two or five. I don't know how much value you give to one cube. Let's at first on the scenes, variables right here and let's add coins okay as a variable it will be not of type null it will be of type int because we just want to have one two three four we don't need 1.1 or something like this the value is zero at the beginning perfect so at the end we want to destroy something so dist do, 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 do. here we go destroy object and what object do we want to destroy we want to destroy the object that will collide with this one so we want to next get the game object itself we can get to here and want to get game object ah oh, you see game object or game object or get so we want to get this object and this will get destroyed then okay and that will happen after that but before we do that we are uh, you know what let's just start with this let's just connect it save the whole thing and let's see if it works okay so let's go to play mode okay, here we go i want to manually bring it down and you see, it gets destroyed. Perfect so far. Okay, let's get back to our graph because we want to have it just if the object has a tag coin. Let's add a brand. Okay, perfect. Here we go. This will happen before. So let's add this here and let's connect this to this. So if we enter the trigger, then at first we make sure that we want to compare the two tags. So string, let's search for string and equals A and B. So at first we want to get the tag, game object, dot tag or get and we get this tag this is here and we want just to have it as a string and this uh, will be coin so if the tag is coin then the outcome is true and then we will destroy the game object so what will happen if we now play it because we don't have this tag done so far so what we can do is we play the game let's bring it down and you see nothing will happen okay but if we now take this one and we want to add a tag 
and we want to call this tag coin. And you see, if we now go back to our uh, cube, nothing is applied here. So we have to apply it manually again. So now it should work. So let's bring it down. And you see, now it just gets destroyed if the tag is coin. Okay, so let's get back to our graph. If we just want to destroy something, that's totally fine. But now we want to add something to the to our variable, to the coins variable right here. So the second thing that should work at the end is set variable. So set var, set scene variable, and the variable will be coins. Okay, so we can connect it. And we, what, what do we want to do? We want to have the number of coins that we have right now plus one. So what we can do is right here, let's drag it out and type in add and you see add math scala so you see a will be now our variable get scene variable here and it will be the coins okay and b will be just one but what will happen is you'll see we have it will add two i will show you pretty quickly let's just play it and you will see on our scenes variables so we have a new game object of course that's called scenes variables let's get to it it's zero. Oh, you, you know what we have to bring it down so it's destroyed and now it's two so we have to you know, wait for a little bit of time. So let's get back to our sphere, edit the graph again, and we want to have a cooldown. Down right here in time. So the duration will be 0.1 maybe, so 0.1 second. And that will happen, uh, let's bring this here, just right here. So before we go to the branch, we wait for 0.1 second. Let's save it and let's see what will happen. We do the exact same thing. Let's bring it down, it disappears. And the scene variables will be here at one. Perfect. So now what we want to do is we want to change the text here as well. So we go to our canvas coin amount. So let's add a new flow machine, a new um on our scenes folder. I want to call this one uh, count coins. Okay, perfect. We can now edit the graph. So we don't need the start function, but the update function. And what we want to do at the end is we want to set the text. So text set. And here you see text.font, no, text.text .text set. And since the text is on the game object itself that holds this flow graph, we can keep it as self. And here the new text will be at variables, scene variables, and we want to get the coins variable. Okay, just like this. And we want to, of course, use an update, but that will not work like this. So what we need to do is we have this scene a variable. So what we want to do is we want to from object, to string you see that object to string and you see green to green oh green to green and orange to orange that let's save it close it and let's see what will happen okay let's bring it down and you see it's one and we can do that again and again so let's just copy and paste these uh, cubes so one two should be four at the end okay so we need to go to our sphere and bring it down. One, two, three, four. Okay, perfect. What would happen if we wouldn't use, let's go to our player's graph. The cooldown is, you will see it in a moment. Let's just, here at the branch, let's just connect, uh, play it right now. And you will see that the amount is totally wrong. <laughs> it's just wrong. So let's go down. One, three, four, Five. Okay, but it was not too bad this time. <laughs> um, let's go a little bit faster. Just like this. Oh, let's go down. It's five. Why it's five? And this one doesn't. Seven. Now, I, it should be four. So, do this cooldown thing. Cooldown in time for 0 0.1. Okay, that's perfect. And we go just like this already here. Save it and it will work again. And now what we can do as well, we can apply gravity to our sphere, to our player. So what will happen? We can lean back and just have a look. It's falling down and collecting all of the coins. So now you have a variable where you have coins. I hope that video helped you. It's pretty basic stuff right here, but for a beginner, I think it's pretty, pretty good to just start with the basics. I have some courses linked down in the description as well as the Unity store, the Unity asset store. So you have to, of course, install Bolt first. It's a free tool, but you have to add it to your assets so that you have to do first, and then you can do this. And if you haven't seen it before, just check out the video where I explain how to install Bolt for Unity. And I hope I see you next time. Leave a like, leave a comment, or whatever you like, a subscription. I thank you so much for it. It helps the channel a lot to go on and I'll see you next time. Bye.